Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the 150 prayer songs of the Bible, the Psalms. Today on Devotional 78, please turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 79. Psalm 79. As you do so, I'll remind us of how we chiefly understand the Psalter. First, we say that these are the prayers of God to his people on earth, to become our prayers, to be lifted back to him. And through so through the Psalms, we are connected to the very heart of God. Secondly, the Psalms teach us how to pray, what to pray for. And thirdly, every Psalm is messianic. That is, it brings us to and reveals the Messiah, Jesus our Lord. Psalm 79 is a, is a graphic, hard Psalm because it brings many of the terrible details about the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple when the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem in 587, 586 BC. So Psalm 79 remembers the destruction, the Babylonian destruction, much like Psalm 74 did. You may remember that a few days ago. But Psalm 74 chiefly remembers the destruction of the temple at the hands of the Babylonians. And it, uh, it cries out, that prayer cries out to God in anguish that his sanctuary has been destroyed. Psalm 79 also focuses on that same historical event. But Psalm 79 focuses not so much on the destruction of the temple, but on the great death of, of many, many Jews uh, in Jerusalem when the Babylonians came and sacked the city. Listen to the opening of this prayer of Psalm 79. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of your servants to the birds of the heavens for food the flesh of your faithful to the beast of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. It, it's almost unimaginable to us to uh, try to think of just the devastation, the suffering of Jerusalem when the Babylonians came. And here, this prayer of Psalm 79 remembers for us historically that bodies of the slain were laid out in the open in the streets of Jerusalem where birds feasted on the body and the, and the blood of those who had been slain ran throughout the streets. It's a horrible, horrible time. And, and so in the history of Israel, uh, their suffering has been marked uh, over and over, but the two things that probably stand out the most would be the time of the Babylonian uh, sack of Jerusalem in 587, 586 BC. Uh, then next, the, the devastation of the temple uh, around 200 BC when the Greeks and, and the Egyptians and other pagans wrecked, uh, ransacked the temple. And then, of course, you have the destruction of the temple uh, in 70 A.D. by the Romans, and then you have the Holocaust, uh, the horrible uh, murder of six million plus Jews in World War II. So you have then, uh, all through history, these terrible uh, times of suffering of the people of God, Israel. But here, Psalm 79 remembers for us this. So then the psalmist cries out, why, God, have you allowed Jerusalem to be ransacked? Why have you allowed the bodies of your own people to lay slain in the streets? And the psalmist says, well, we must confess our sins. We must ask God's forgiveness. If whatever uh, our sins have done that have uh, led to this, please, O oh Lord, let us repent. And secondly, the psalm then calls us to pray and cry out for all those who are persecuted, all the faithful 
who then and now lie persecuted by acts of evil and destruction. We think of the persecuted church today. Uh, Jews and Christians are being persecuted in numbers that really we've never seen. They, they keep going up almost every day. Uh, the, the devastation, the, the suffering of believers in, in countries such as Nigeria, let alone North Korea and China, uh, it's horrible. We don't see uh, our headlines of our newspapers or evening news talking about this, but it's happening in numbers that are staggering day by day. So Psalm 79 says, in a time of great suffering, first pray uh, for forgiveness in case there's any place that sin has played in this. Secondly, pray for those who are suffering, for those who families and friends who have lost loved ones. Pray today for persecuted Jews and Christians throughout the world. And finally, the psalm ends with a call to praise God publicly. No matter what the day, no matter what the occasion, the psalmist says, at the end of the day, our only true response to God is to praise him. So Psalm 79 is, uh, starts off so difficult. It ends in praise, but in the meantime, it teaches us three things. First, in a time of suffering, uh, sin may not be the reason, but you always want to reflect, Lord, if there's anything in my life that I need to repent of and change, please bring that to mind. And secondly, Psalm 79 reminds us to pray for faithful people throughout the world today who are suffering. Pray every day for the persecuted church. And finally, Psalm 79 says, at the end of the day, no matter what the day has been, let us publicly praise God that many may come to him in times of joy and in times of suffering. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his countenance and give you his peace.